Well, well, here we go, guys. Um, Jan and I are so excited to share uh, some teachings with you this afternoon. Uh, we're so uh, all in in this business. We've been blessed with 30 years of building our own company and our assets. Uh, we have multiple assets today as a result of the great uh, mentorship that we've uh, been blessed and honored to receive from the Yeagers and the Yeager family. And here we are now uh, just sharing with you guys, uh, hopefully a few nuggets, a uh, bit of an unconventional setting, but uh, we're willing to, uh, you know, basically roll up our sleeves, pour our hearts into this. Uh, we are so excited. We believe like wholeheartedly that this is the answer to uh, the situation that we're all in coming out of this uh, incredible 2020 mess. And, uh, mm -hmm. and so we're going to try and share some mindsets some some skill sets, some, some really some heart and some passion about what we're, what we have our hands on. And so let's uh, roll up our sleeves. Let's get some things done. And uh, here's my beautiful wife to kick it off and uh, she'll share it. I mean, I've always loved uh, building the business as a team, as a partnership. Jan's always been equally yoked to me. She's uh, all in um, in this business. And so that's been really a blessing to me to be able to have a partner that, um, you know, sees the vision that, that I've seen, uh, was was all in for a legacy business for our family. And, um, and to me, I think that for you guys, that's the same thought process as well. So uh, she's brilliant. She's also very smart and uh, she can teach you a lot. So give her a listen. Here's Jan. Wow, <laughs> I don't think I've ever been called brilliant, <laughs> but I'll take it, I'll take it. Uh, but anyways, it's just great to see everybody and uh, well, obviously see everybody <laughs> um, as much as we can, uh, but uh, it's great to be here and uh, just so excited to uh, share with you guys. And uh, I think we've all learned a lot uh, in the past year and uh, with this crazy pandemic and uh, what's going on in the world, um, I think we all know that we all got to keep growing. We all got to keep going. We all got to keep doing our best. And, uh, you know, I just, uh, I think the biggest thing we all learn is that life is a journey and it doesn't matter what's going on in the world. Uh, you still got to pursue. You still got to do the things that you need to do to have a successful life. And, uh, you know, even uh, with everything going on in the last year, you know, so many times people have sort of um, frozen, like they've become frozen in not knowing what to do uh, because of this pandemic. And, and I think about all the things that have happened in our life, because even for us, like the last year, even though maybe our business didn't grow as much as we wanted, uh, you know, we had to change some things on how we were doing it and that. But, you know, I think what happened was that there were so many wonderful things that happened. Like our son had a baby, a baby girl, beautiful baby girl, Scarlett. And, uh, you know, and then we ended up selling our house and buying another dream home. And uh, so it's like, I, I keep thinking like, a lot of things have happened in 2020 and there was a lot of great things too. And sometimes you gotta maybe think about the great things that have happened and put some perspective on what has happened in your life. And, uh, you know, even uh, probably get a little bit more into it in our story as far as uh, where Bill Art and I are at right now today. Um, but, uh, we basically have just purchased a, a dream property that I have just fallen in love with. Uh, it is totally water view uh, galore. And uh, it's, just, it's just incredible. It's sort of a recreational property that I've always loved. We've got a sauna, a hot tub, uh, beautiful views from every from every window and uh, it's just it's just been a dream come true for us so uh, and it's all because of this business so that's why we're going to take some time and maybe teach how to get through some of the struggles and uh, you know me I always like to have a little bit of a, uh, a story to go along with things and um, you know I there was a story I read uh, in one of my devotionals and it was about two little old ladies, you know, they were like, you know, tiny, tiny, probably shorter than me. And uh, they were going for a drive and they could barely see over their uh, uh, windshield. And uh, so anyways, they're driving along and all of a sudden they go through a stop sign and they just keep going through the stop sign. And, uh, you know, so basically one of the ladies yelled and said, Mildred, she says, what are you doing? And she didn't say anything. And then before you know it, they're going through another stop sign. 
And, and it was like, Mildred, stop, stop the car. You just went through your second stop sign. And Mildred looked at her friend and she said, oh my gosh, she says, am I driving? <laughs> and so I guess I say that story is because you are driving. You're driving your life, you're driving your future. You're in the front seat, you're at the steering wheel and you've got to drive your car. And I just encourage you that, you know, we got to figure this out. You're driving your life, let's make it happen. And, uh, you know, cause success is a ladder that you can't climb with your hands in your pocket. I know Bill's in construction and we've got a construction business and uh, construction management business and, you know, and it's so true. Success is a ladder that you can't climb with your hands in your pocket. So get your hands out of your pocket and start understanding that, you know, there's things that we have to do that are different. There's things that we're going to have to learn to adapt to. And, uh, you know, I, I know for us, um, you know, is, is the number one thing is to prepare and have a, a success mindset. You've got to think successful principles. And, uh, you know, even, even for Bill and I, we, it, we've had to, you know, change things around. We've had to do things different, but it's okay. We're willing to change because life is all about change. Nobody sits, stays the same all their life. Nobody and nothing stays the same. So we have to adapt to change. And uh, even um, uh, in the last, you know, in the last year, Bill and I have really started to do a little bit more um, um, outdoor activity. I think everybody has, right? We bought bicycles, you know, we've been walking, we've been doing all kinds of stuff on uh, paddle boards, all this kind of stuff. And, and, you know, so it's been exciting. I love that kind of change because it's just got us more active. Uh, you know, you just gotta, you know, I gotta work on my uh, uh, <laughs> strength on my, on my body, but uh, you know, it's so exciting to be active again. And, and because of the pandemic, you know, we have developed these uh, uh, new uh, things, ways of life, which is exciting. But I love this because even when I was, when I started, uh, bicycling and it took me a while to really enjoy it and and then now it's like you can't stop me I have my Apple watch and it's like I am going to close my exercise ring every day and um, and but I love the theory that I got to read this um, you will never feel yourself you will never feel yourself your way into activity you have to act your way into feeling. And so after a while, after I was on my bicycle, you know, day in and day out, after a while, I just loved it. And so it's the same with this business is that we got to start talking to people differently. And, you know, lots of times, uh, you know, people will ask us, well, how do you talk to people when you got to stay six feet apart? Well, what we've been doing is when you're outside, guess what? You can talk to people. It's more approachable when you're outside. So, uh, you know, just doing the different things. And don't, uh, number two is don't fear what others will say. And so many times, you know, um, you know, you think that you got to get permission from somebody to move on, or you got to get permission to build your business from people. Well, that's not the case. You got to understand that uh, this business is your life. We talked about that, right? That it's, it's all up to you to make this business work. And uh, sometimes that's good and bad and, and, and ugly, but it is the truth. It's got to be up to you to make this business happen. Um, I know I love uh, uh, every year, well, maybe not this year, but or last year, but uh, every year we go to a cottage with um, some of my girlfriends or whatever from way back in grade school. And um, probably out of, there's six of us to go together, uh, out of out of the six of them, every one of the girls have at least been in the business at least once, some of them twice. And obviously Bill and I are the only ones that actually made it, you know, to a substantial level in the business, um, you know, being diamond or whatever. Everybody else, you know, they made a little bit of money and then they quit, all this kind of stuff. Anyways, the reason I tell you this story is over the years, 
there was many a times where they would always give me a hard time about building a business on how busy we were and what we were doing and all that kind of stuff. And so in the last couple of years, I started to notice like they, they weren't giving me a hard time anymore, but guess what they were doing? <laughs> they were like basically teasing me that, oh, you and Bill have all this money. You know, because one time uh, I actually catered, uh, you know, I hired a caterer to come in and, and uh, so we had uh, a catered meal for the six of us and I thought it was just a nice gesture and, and so, and they thought, you know, oh wow, you know, you're, now you can cater the meals, uh, you know, you have this wonderful lifestyle, but I guess the reason I tell you that story is, you know, for years they teased us about building the business and then they stopped sort of, you know, giving us a hard time. And now they tease me about my lifestyle, <laughs> that I have no job. I don't understand work. I don't understand all this kind of stuff. And so I just want to encourage you to, you know, take a look and you don't have to get permission from people to build this business. You know why? Because it's your life. So you make it happen. You make those decisions. Um, number three is manage your time instead of your um, instead of wasting it, uh, waste your money and you're only out of money, waste your time and you lost part of your life. And I thought that was so important because so many times, what do we say? Yesterday, you said you'd do it tomorrow. Well, today is tomorrow. Yesterday, you said you'd do it tomorrow. And so you got to start, okay, maybe we got to start learning a little bit more. Maybe you got to start reading a little bit more on how to, uh, you know, connect with people and interrupt people in a daily life. And, you know, because people want this business even more so today. You know, it's so important to understand that we, we have the best business out there especially in these times. And so just don't take it for granted that uh, uh, this business is not for everybody because it's for, for more people than ever now. And um, I just can't encourage you enough. Uh, I just had a couple of points here that I wrote now that, you know, start now, create daily habits for success, work your butt off. You know, failure is temporary. I know I talk about a story that uh, just happened uh, last week. And um, <laughs> there was a gentleman that came here to our house because Bill's uh, Bill bought a new chuck, a GMC or whatever. And the starter, you know how you can uh, basically start your car from the inside of your home, you know, with the key or whatever. And uh, so anyways, his starter wasn't working. He couldn't do it. So anyways, the GMC guy, he actually came right to our house because he was going to sort of teach Bill what to do or find out what was wrong. Anyway, so he came, Bill wasn't home yet. So, you know, I invited him in, he had a mask on. And anyways, I invited him in and we started chit chatting and he was going through, like I showed him the house because he came in, it was around four-ish in the afternoon. And he says, oh, wow, look at the view. And so I, you know, started taking him through the house and showing him everything. And and then anyways, he started talking about, he said, you know, I, I really don't want to, you know, I don't want to really uh, work forever. I really want to start, you know, um, investing some money into real estate and all this kind of stuff. And anyways, I, I, you know, me, I'm going, oh, wow, you know, that's exciting and all this kind of stuff. Anyways, it worked out that I failed. I basically failed on talking to him about dropping the message of mentorship. And it was actually after he left. And, and then I said to Bill, I said, you know, he started talking about mentorship and wanting to invest his money. And, you know, so I said, why did I not, you know, drop the message on our mentorship program and how we, you know, in the last 30 years and all this kind of stuff. Anyways, point being is I failed. But guess what? It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I failed because I, you know, didn't I didn't say the right thing to the right person, but at least I got the conversation going. At least I was talking to somebody and 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 encouraging people. So uh, it's okay to fail, but do something and learn along the way. Guess what I did? I learned. I learned a lot. So uh, just understand that and never give up. And I am so thankful <laughs> now that I get teased by all my uh, grade school friends, I'm so thankful that we never gave up 
because if we never gave up, I wouldn't have been able to cater that meal for them. So never give up. Um, number four is break, um, break your big dream into small dreams. And I think that's so important because um, the greater danger for most of us isn't that our aim is too high and miss it, but that it is too low and we reach it. You gotta have big dreams, guess why? Because that's what's gonna keep you going on in this business. You know, Bill and I, like almost, well, 30 years, it'll be 30 years this year. And you know, it's been so wonderful because we just keep setting the next goal, setting the next dream, setting the next, uh, you know, pin level we wanna create or, or hit. So, you know, just make sure that you're breaking it down and it just keeps you going and it keeps you growing. Um, I also had written down A, B, G, always be growing, always be growing. Never under, and never underestimate that. I'm just gonna check the time here. Oh, his phone went off here. <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, the other thing is uh, I always like telling people, um, you know, you gotta break it down to five hours a week because life is gonna happen, right? You've got your, you know, different things going on in your life and, uh, you know, you've got family, you've got, you know, responsibilities, all that kind of stuff. Um, just make sure that, um, you know, you give this business at least five hours a week. And when I started to think about five hours a week in this business, I thought piece of cake. But I'm not talking about, you know, that five hours a week is not reading. It's not listening is it to audios. You know why? Because that, that's important, but that's just a daily habit. And so don't include that in your five hours a week of building this business. I like to think five hours a week is boots on the ground. And that means that you're actually being productive. You're talking to people. You're, you're uh, doing the things that are necessary to build your business. Maybe you're getting a new customer. Maybe you're getting a new IBO. Maybe you're making an interruption. Maybe you're doing social media stuff so that you're connecting with people. Uh, you know, because we got to think of different things to do. And uh, so just get excited about that. Um, number five is never stop learning. Um, I love this. Um, Warren Buffett, he said that everybody can read what I read. It's a level playing field. And this guy is like a multi-billionaire. And he's saying that it's a level playing field. You can read what Warren Buffett reads. You can read what Dexter Yeager used to read. You can read what the Jaeger boys read. You can read what your leaders read. Why? Because it's a level playing field. You can learn more and become more and understand that. <laughs> Bill and I, when you know, you, you think about where we came from and you know, all we did is just, you know, we took the mentorship and we decided to apply it. We decided to actually listen and apply right? And, and before you knew it, within two and a half years, we were diamonds. So, you know, just understand that it's okay. Most things are caught, not taught. So make sure you're asking the questions to your mentors. And number six is, uh, you know, step up from failures uh, with a lesson learned. Um, we all have strengths. Fail your way into finding your strength. And I want everybody to write this down. A razor blade is sharp, but can't cut a tree down. An ax is strong, but can't cut hair. You have your strengths. I have my strengths. Bill has his strengths. Your leaders have their strengths. Figure out your strengths in this business. Is it talking to people? Is it doing the things that you need to do to, to expand your business? I'm telling you, this business, 2021, is going to just skyrocket. Why? 
because absolutely everybody wants their own business. Everybody's already working at home. Everybody's already shopping online. Everybody wants, you know, world-class products uh, that they can order online and have shipped to their door. Everybody wants that and everybody can get part of it. And so just understand that uh, we are definitely on the road to an incredible 2021 year. Just don't waste your time, you know, trying to figure things out. Say, now is the time I'm driving, right? Remember the old ladies? You know, I'm driving. I need to do what I need to do to build my business so that I can live the life of Riley and have a, a luxury life uh, that only I can do. So get excited. And I know Bill's right here to wrap it up. Awesome. Well, I'm so thankful that uh, uh, Jan was able to share and uh, you focused on her. That's uh, sometimes you do we both stand here and it's uh i think a bit annoying and i know that um i'm, I'm just going to jump right in uh, i'm going to ask for some grace i know uh, one of the the um uh, blessings or serendipities of jan's uh uh, encouragement of lifestyle and biking and uh, paddle boarding and exercising is uh, I'm down probably 40 pounds, 40, 50 pounds. Uh, so this jacket looks like I'm wearing a, a, a feed sack. So I'm going to lose the jacket and uh, I am going to let it roll and let it rip here uh, because this is uh, way too important. I appreciate, uh, you know, what Jan mentioned about failure and I was uh, listening there and really, you know, that that gentleman, um, you know, we I see him on a regular basis when I get my truck service. So she didn't fail. She just planted some seeds and uh, I'm going to water them. Uh, and then uh, we're going to have see if they can uh, bear some fruit. So first, I just want to talk about her thoughts because um, really you're how you're thinking, even coming into this conference, like what's your what's your mindset? What's your thought process? Because our thoughts do dictate the trajectory of our life. I mean, there's cool quotes like the one by Henry Ford, whatever you think you can or whether you think you can't, you're right. Um, you know, believe you can, you're halfway there. Uh, the happiness in your life depends on the quality of your thoughts. Uh, these, are, these are things that we all grew up on. And so what I want to encourage you to do is as you kick off this, this conference or, you know, probably we're partway through now, but as you, you know, basically take this information i want you to renew your mind i want you to be be passionate about what you have your hands on you know i want you to understand that you know even in, in the bible they use the word um you know to transform and transform re really what that means is is to renovate and so uh as jan mentioned we're like we have a construction management company as well with our with our kids and you know we do different types of renovations and i'm not sure where everybody is today and what type of renovation you need in your mind uh, but you know, we do renovations while we just, when we bought this house, we painted, that's all that needed to happen here. It was already, uh, the way we wanted it inside. So all we needed is to update some colors, put some paint in that we enjoyed and, uh, we were good to go. Now we're doing another renovation down the road. Uh, and it was a full gut. We're down to the studs because, uh, everything had to go. The insulation wasn't right. The drywall wasn't right. Uh, the best means of, of action and to have the right product at the end was to, to completely gut the product. And so there's two drastically different types of renovations. And so I'm not sure where you're at when you're hear, hearing this today, uh, but I think you need to evaluate uh, your renovation. What do you need to do? And, and maybe it's push a reset and say, okay, I'm coming out of this conference 2021, I'm gonna start kicking some butt. And I think probably the biggest renewing that you need to have is a renewing of belief that the great thing can happen. You know, we're, we're attached, as Jan mentioned, to the greatest uh, uh, asset that I think is available uh, to any human being out there. We have a great corporation that backs us. Uh, they do everything right, the quality products, the, all the online stuff, and the mentorship and coaching is equally, if not greater. And so we have this phenomenal business and people are succeeding left, right, and center. So we have to believe that the great thing can happen. And so from that belief, you begin to understand that you too. I remember when I first saw the business, I started thinking, well, if one man can do it, another man can do it. Jan said something really brilliant, that it's a level playing field. There's no information held back. You get all the same information that I received. 
right? And it's brilliant because what we choose to do with that information, what we choose to do developing that skill set is huge. Second thing you need to renew probably in your thoughts is your passion. You know, get excited about what you have your hands on. Get excited about your future. You know, as Dan mentioned with her girlfriends, I mean, it's, it's so true. And I think they make fun of her Mercedes and they make fun of this and her traveling and all that. You know, they used to make fun of us being in the business, but we stayed true. We went, we busted through that, right? And, uh, you know, I always said, you know, if you start this this business and you get somebody that's heckling you or you get somebody that's giving you a hard time, you know, two to five years down the road, one of you is going to be right. And there was no way that I was going to say to somebody, you're right. This doesn't work. It wasn't going to happen. Once I put my name on this company and this was our asset, we got to work. Third thing you probably need to renew is the skill set right? You need to start fresh with a skill set and start, you know, building from the a foundation of understanding how this business, there's a few things that probably are tweaking. As Jan mentioned, it's a, it's a little different world out there. And so we have to adapt to that, but we will adapt just like we have every other time is, you know, we're 30 years in this. There's been lots of changes and tweaks, but what hasn't changed is the mindset. What hasn't changed is the thought process of what it takes to succeed. And then the last thing is to renew your accountability, Renew your accountability. Get tight with your mentor. You know, I, we uh, had a call with Jeff Yeager the other day, and you know, we, uh, you know, we, 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 from each call, we have a set of ga a game plan that we're trying to accomplish, and you know, in all different areas of our life. Obviously, the asset. Obviously, our relationships, our kids, and building other assets and other income, and preparing ourselves for our legacy. And you know, when we get on that call, we want to make sure that we have moved the needle forward. That there is something that's accomplished. Because if we don't accomplish anything with the blessing we've been given from his coaching and his mentorship, then that's on us. And so if you don't feel bad, if things aren't moving forward, then you probably don't have the right mentor. You need to find somebody or you need to change your thinking that you need to be more accountable, accountable to yourself, you know, accountable to your future and just start to make some things happen. And so, you know, that's really renewing your mind. And, uh, you know, some other strategies or, or mindset things I want to talk about is, you know, allow your coach to speak into your life. I mean, lots of times when Jeff shares with us, not all the things that he shares is is um, is positive. You know, sometimes I need to change some things, and I, you know, I don't take offense to that, right? I realize, okay, I'm not where I want to be. I have to take that coaching. I have to be real with with the situation and understand that this gentleman that I have the privilege and the honor to be, you know, associated with and that speaks into our lives. This these this is the family that's a number one money maker in this industry. Plus. Also, they have multiple, multiple other assets and incomes that have proven very successful that I get to tap into that wisdom. You know, get constant communication. That's that accountability. Get constant communication. That develops trust and transparency. You know, I, I wrote here a sentence a marriage counselor never hears. I want a divorce because my partner communicates too much. Right? I mean, no, a marriage counselor is never going to hear that sentence, right? That somebody communicates too much. You know, that's not this case, you've got to over communicate. You got to, you got to get passionate about what you're doing. You know, uh, get hungry. You know, we've read a lot of the books that have come down the, the system talk about just getting 1% better, whether it's atomic habits, whether it's a compound effect, there was a 1% rule book out there. I mean, there's, it's just doing a little bit more, a little, being a little bit better every single day. That's all you have to do. It's not leap, you know, quantum leaps. It's just that 1% better every day. You know, find the good. You know, there's, as Jan mentioned, we've had some great things happen in the past 12 months. Great things, you know, and, and why? Because we chose not to sit on our hands when everybody else is, oh my God, what's going to happen? What's going to happen to the economy? What's going to happen to the real estate? You know, we, we have read enough and seen enough over our, I'm 60 years old and over the 30 years we've been part of this asset. Usually when things like this happen, everybody sits in their hands and does nothing. But if you read through history, wealth is created with, by the people that chose not to sit in the sign lines, but stayed in the playing field. And that's what Jan and I chose to do. We chose to stay in the arena. We, we chose to be out there, be out front. And as a result, we had some great things happen. So be encouraged by that. Be encouraged that if you make those, those same steps, you guys got some of the greatest leaders that are available to you in this business. Take advantage of that. You know, I think this is a time also where, you know, whether you're, you're just getting started or whether you're a, one of the, the leaders of, the, of, these organi of this organization, you know, this is a time to teach less and show more. 
you know, Jan and I have, uh, have basically said, we got we to gotta go out and, and do it ourselves, right? We got to go out and prove by putting on some structure and putting on some new legs. And why? Because that people, people get, they, people get excited by that, that you're not just talking the talk, you're actually walking the walk. And, um, and, and so that's important. Right? That's important to, to um, that people sense that you're not just that you're not just teaching, you're actually showing them what to do. You know, as good as Dr. George is at building the business, uh, he couldn't get the business uh, to diamond with your structure. You know, that's that's the truth, right? As good as he is, as good as Jeff is, as good as any of your leaders is, most of those people could not get the business that you currently have with the structure that you have. It is not rocket science. I have it in my notes a little later about just having some clarity of what you're doing. You know, have some expectation, right? Have some expectation. Don't wait for the right time. Janice mentioned that in her talk, right? The right time is now. Get to work, right? Get to work and make some things happen. And that's another thing that's become very evident. You know, there's even songs about 10,000 hours, right? Why? Because it takes 10,000 hours to really hone and become a professional at your craft. Understand that. Right. And um, daily ap application consistency. If, if Jan and I did anything right, as we built this asset, the number one thing that I could say with 100 percent transparency is we did something in this asset every day. Every day we did something. And that came from my upbringing of being on a dairy farm where it didn't matter if it was Christmas, it didn't matter if it was my birthday, it didn't matter what day it was, the cows that we had on that farm need to be milked twice a day, right? Twice a day. It didn't matter if it was Christmas Day, New Year's Day, your birthday, it had to be done anyway. So I brought that set. So when I started this asset, I said, well, if I do that for for, for first of all, my family, and then I work for people I did it for. If I did it for them, why wouldn't I do it for myself? Why wouldn't I do something every day? Now, not every day. Obviously, we did different things on Christmas Day at the farm than we did maybe in the middle of haying season. Obviously, a slight different work agenda on those days, but we did something, right? We established, we understood, if you want to put footprints in the sands of time, you have to put on your work shoes. You know, and that's the only way you're going to develop your skill set. You know, your skill set of talking to people and how it just rolls. So you're not standing there thinking, you know, as they're talking, not listening to them, thinking about what you're going to say back. It's, it's an interaction, right? You're actually listening and, and, you're, and it's, a, it's an ebbs and flows. You know, any, any process of learning and change can be broken into three buckets. Knowing, doing, and being. You know, knowing. Knowing the knowledge. In this QP process, there's been no shortage of information. Information is poured down to us from the Jaeger family. Audio after audio after audio, you know, seminars, all the things that you've been given. You know, you have to understand that you can control your controllables. What are your controllables? Your controllables are your nine core habits, the things that you need to do on a daily basis. You can control that. And if you can stay consistent, that controllable will make you 100% predictable in your business. Why? Because you can control, you will get better. If you do all those nine core habits, you read, you listen, you, you be accountable, you do your volume, you had a customer, all the things that are in those nine core habits, you, you can't help but have success. But what happens is people you know, do it for a week, do it for a month, then they look behind them and see, okay, what's happening? What's the results? They're not happy with that. And so what they do is they put on the brakes, right? They put on the brakes. And so when you put on the brakes, then you go backwards. It's like, and again, I can get into that to even fitness. I mean, you, know, you can't work out one week a month. And then the other three weeks, you eat ice cream and pizza, right? You have to be consistent. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, don't get me wrong. I like ice cream and pizza, right? But if I have those things, I make sure my workout is, is at another intense level so that I can justify that. Okay. And so actually, you know, just doing endless reps, practice, pushing through the obstacles. What are the obstacles? In this business, the obstacles is you can't tell whether things are happening. That's why you have a coach. That's why you have a mentor. They're there to show you and to help you understand things are happening. Jeff always does that. Every time we get together, he recaps what's happened in our lives over the last number of years, almost a decade now. He just reminds us, hey, remember when you got first got together with me? Here's where you are. Right here. And, and so because that allows us to have belief and hope. Yes, his information, his teaching is actually helping us move the needle forward.
And so you have to understand that your coach, your mentor is the only person that is allowed to do that for you. You can't do it for yourself because you're going to be you're going to be criticizing yourself. You're going to have comparisons. I mean, oh, there's never been a positive comparison. When you compare yourself to somebody else, you compare their strengths to uh, your weaknesses. It's never going to work. Dr. George told me that all the time. And so if you can develop that skill set, you're knowing, you're doing, and then you're being. You're just, you're just walking. You see that? I remember, you know, I can, I can visualize that for myself, you know, just even in our journey. You know, the, the, the biggest journey for, for myself was going from zero to Ruby, right? Zero to Ruby, because we didn't go platinum, right, in the business. We actually went Ruby and went into Emerald qualification before we ever, ever, ever hit platinum, right? We went into, we went into Emerald qualification because we were taught, get structure, build structure, and that will yield a certain results. And so that was the time where I developed the skill set. By the end of that stage, you know, when I was done that, I knew this business. I walked it, I talked it, I, I was it. And so, you know, that's really where you want to get to. You know, have, have more access, changing it for, you know, we never, we've never had access to a better opportunity than we have right now. And so that's really a mindset. That's really uh, where you are. And so, I think the battle cry as I move into the skill set here in a second, 2021, is fall in love with the process. Fall in love with developing your skill set, right? Because from that excitement, from that love, you'll get through those obstacles. You'll say, okay, I got to push through this. I got to push through this. It'll be amazing. And do it every single day. It's like I said earlier, you know, don't take a day off. You know, push through so you, and again, I'm speaking to the people that in the next 12 months want to go platinum or break platinums, or go into emerald qualification, or diamond qualification. This, if this seems a bit strong to you, this, this is a bill, you know, I'm sorry. But to me, that's the way this business built. You know, this business is built fast when you're moving fast. It's not built slow. I, I, just, I just don't think that works. I think you have to be all in. You have to be in love with the process. You have to do something every single day. You have to celebrate your commitment right? Your commitment to your core habits, your commitment to your, your upline, your commitment to your downline. You know, you got to track your metrics and data. You know, that's why we have, you know, these core run sheets. We have these sheets to track our metrics, to track our data. You know, even on the dairy farm, I remember my dad, we'd come for breakfast because the milk truck used to come uh, right after, or right as we were eating breakfast. And so when we were done at the breakfast table, you know, my dad would get up, he'd go back out to the, to the barn. The first thing that he would do, I mean, I think the barn could have been on fire. Okay, but the first thing he would do is he'd go to the way slip that the, the driver left after he picked up our, our milk, and that would be the weight of what was in the vault tank. That was the metric. That was the indicator of what was happening in our herd, what was happening uh, within, the, within the, the animals. Because if that had dropped, then he needed to adjust something. Maybe it was feed, maybe it was better pasture, what, whatever. Maybe there was a bit slight sickness. Whatever, there, whatever was happening, that needed to be adjusted immediately. He didn't not check for weeks on end. He checked every single day. Why? Because that was a metric. And so what you need to do is understand the importance of metrics and data. That's, you know, think about it. The last 12 months, how, how much have we heard about metrics and data, right? And so if, it, it's important in your business as well. And then lastly, master your craft. Be, a, be, a, be an expert at it. Be an expert at mastering your craft because from there, you know, you're going you're gonna to have success. And so those are some mindset principles. Next thing I just want to share with you for a few minutes and then we'll wrap up is just some things about skill set. Having some clarity. Most successful people have clarity. Why? They know what they're doing. Maybe there's slight adjustments, whatever, but they have clarity of where they're going. And that clarity allows them to go faster. You know, uh, I think it, you can make the analogy of people are trying to build this business and it's like putting together a thousand piece puzzle without the picture box, without having the box and seeing the picture. You would have no clue where to put the pieces. I know the, the last, um, maybe some of you have done a puzzle uh, or two in, in this last year, but you know, it's, it'd be impossible to actually put the puzzle together without the picture box. But I truly believe that's what people try to do in this business. They don't have any clarity. You know, you think about cross country running versus sprinting. 
You know, why is the, the pace so much faster on a track, whether it's a hundred meter or 200 meter or 400, why, you know, many times they run the same distance as they do cross country, but it's a slower pace cross country. Why? Because the people running don't get to see the finish line. They don't get to see where they're going. The fastest a cross country skier or cross country skier, the cross country runner runs is when he comes out of the, the bush and he can see the finish line, sees all the spectators, see, and that's the fastest pace. Why? Because he finally sees where he's going. And so I encourage you, you know, to find some clarity. Where is it that you're going? What is it that you're trying to accomplish? And, um, you know, what, what, what is it? I mean, for me, I mentioned earlier, you know, project one, we, sh we show the asset all the time. Project one is to go platinum. And the way we show platinum in the plan is really it's Ruby. It's, it's 22,000 PV. It's a very successful business. Why is it showing that way? Because if you break a platinum, you still carry 7,500 points on the side and you have a hugely profitable business. That's why we show that. So that's project one. You should show it in the plan, in the Yeager plan all the time, project one. And so going diamond is helping six people do that, okay? Helping six people do that. Because if you help six people, not five, not four, but six individual partnerships, you help them do that. If you do that, you're a diamond. They will not hold it back from you. If you accomplish that, and it's the same for anybody. So going diamond is having six honoring partnerships. Well, what happens is, because I think we get confused that every partner is the same. Well, they're not, right? You have three types of partners in this business. Number one type is you have a registered partnership, right? What's a registered partnership? Well, it's somebody that got in and isn't really doing a lot. Well, maybe they're doing nothing. Well, let's say maybe you can't even find them. Now, we're supposed to be in a vetting process, right? And that's somewhat eliminated, but it still happens, right? Why? Because people are people, right? I mean, I, I mean, know that people have, you know, say their marriage vows. And we know a couple like seven, eight months after they said their vows, they were separated. Like, how does that happen? Well, it happens. It doesn't happen to everybody, but it happens. Same with a, a partner, a partner that you have brought them more. They went through the, the process, everything looked good. You didn't see any red flags, but nothing's happening. So that's one type of partnership. Second type of partnership is somebody that's honoring the partnership. Okay, what's a what's a honoring partnership? A partner honoring partnership is when they're doing the nine core habits. They're doing everything that they have as a controllable. They're, they're, they're taking those and they're knocking them off every day. They're reading, they're listening, they're being accountable. They got a customer, they're doing their volume, everything that's on, they're attending everything. They are basically honoring their partnership. They get their tickets for a conference. Everything's bang on, okay? But there's no growth. They are honoring a partnership but they're not growing their business. The third type of partnership is a growing honoring partnership. That's the partnership that every month, whether you're, you're judging it monthly or major, major function to major function, you see that they're growing. They are a growing personal partnership. That's who we're looking for. We're looking for six of those. If you don't have currently six of those, what, and again, I don't want to say something that is different than what your upline is saying, but if you don't have six of those, I would say that you needed more structure. You needed to put people in place so that you have six honoring partnerships, okay? Huge. So that's what we're looking for. And to go diamond, you're looking for those six individual growing partnerships. You're going to help each one of them do project one, which is Platinum Ruby, and you're going to be a qualified diamond. Huge. You know the bonuses. It's off the chart. It's unbelievable. And it's, but it's clear. That's all it is. Now, is it going to take some work? Absolutely. Right? You're going to do it. And so then step one is figuring out, okay, where do I lack in my personal partners? Step two is you need to go platinum and know how you did it. I've been in this business 30 years. We've broke hundreds of platinums. Okay, now we broke a type of platinum that they weren't sure what happened. They were in the line of sponsorship, their upline worked real hard, they put two or three legs in for them, kept building structure, and they ended up having 7,500 points flow through them. They had enough side volume to, to carry other platinum ship. But really, if you ask them how they went platinum, they wouldn't have a clue. 
Second type of platinum that we broke is people that, you know, basically their downline went platinum, right? They had a downline that they sponsored, tore this business up, and they were just lucky enough to get caught in the line of sponsorship. And so they're platinums, but really their downline did it all. The third type of uh, partnership or platinum in this is of somebody that went platinum and then they knew how they did it. You know, that's what I said earlier. That was the, that was the, that was the most <clears throat> intense, but the most funnest time in this business is when we were in sync, Jan and I, we were going platinum. We were building project one. We were figuring out, we we're developing our, our skill set. We were, you know, failing. We were doing all the things we needed to succeed. And man, that's huge. So what you need to do is find six of those, help those six people that know how to go platinum and you can develop your skill set. Okay, now I, I'm just gonna wrap up with some, with some fundamental things for the QP process. You know, uh, obviously I think there's probably, and most of you know this, there's really three processes, okay? There's a pre-process and that's when we're putting people into our pipeline. We're getting people from an introduction or somebody off our list through to a point where we can, you know, basically potentially drop our message and get them into the process. So that involves connecting, right? That involves creating an interruption. That's called learning, you know, in, in initiating conversations, learning to ask questions as you initiate conversations that, that require them to answer, you know, nice shoes. Well, I used to say that, but that doesn't, you know, thanks. But if you say nice shoes, where did you get it? That makes people have a response. So you have to ask questions. You have to create a conversation where there's interaction. So create an interruption that has interaction. Interruption that has interruption. Then, like Janice, when she was meeting with the young guy, you know, she tried to deepen the conversation. She was asking him questions. Oh, hey, what do you want to do? Where, where do you see yourself? What's going on? You know, where do you see yourself in the next five years? She was deepening the conversation. And in all fairness to her, you know, she maybe didn't have a chance to make someone aware of who's available. That's the next step. Once you've deepened the conversation and you found out a bit, I always say you're looking for the crack in the pot. You're looking for that, you know, that, that, that void that people have, whether it's time, money, security, whatever it is, maybe they just want to be around a successful team. You're looking for that crack in the pot. Then once you find the crack in the pot, then what your responsibility is to do is to make them aware of who's available right? And make them aware of who's available, not what's available, who's available and qualify them. If that would be interesting to them, would they see value in being introduced to somebody like that? Would they see value in having access to somebody like that? And then if they say yes, then you, you have a potential to drop your message. Well, we had the same feelings. We felt had value. Jan and I were spinning our wheels. I was 30 years old, three young kids expecting our fourth. We were going nowhere fast, okay? And so we saw value in being introduced to a, a Ben, a young couple that was in their early or well, mid-20s that was on the verge of retiring. It blew my mind. I mean, how is this legal? That was my question. How could somebody be in their 20s that would retire to an asset they built? Anyway, that blew my mind. So that's the pre-process is getting through that skill set from connecting to initiating through an interruption to deepening to making somebody aware of who's available, to qualify them if that would interest them, to then a potential D DPM. Now, the second part of the process and the QP process is to go through and put them through a vetting process. The vetting process and the QP process is a series of events and meetings that are structurally put in place to allow us to properly educate them on how business is built, how we build the business, properly have them understand what it's going to take to build the business, and finally have them have an understanding of what commitment we're looking for if we would offer them a partnership. And so we just meet, see if they're a good fit, we give them a homework of a book, then we meet back to see if they've done the homework, then from there we get them in front of the asset, then we follow them up, we get them in front of the asset again. We then follow them up again. Maybe we think, okay, look, one more time, they need to see this plan, right? And then we make sure that it's right. There's no red flags. And then maybe we have a questionnaire we ask, maybe a few questions we want them to, to fill out just so that they can remind themselves of what's happening. And then we make an offer. That's 
what we call our QP process, our qualifying process. And then the last part, the third process, is really the, the once they have received an offer, I mean, well, they're not platinum. Now they got to be taught what to do. Now we got to put them through, you know, a series of phases. They got to get launched. They got to get their website up. They got to get their ditto set up, right? They got to get all these things set up so that they have a, an opportunity to win. We properly launch them, right? Then we teach them what it takes to honor a partnership. That's probably the first 30, 60, maybe even 90 days. They just get comfortable honoring the par par partnership. They get up comfortable reading. They get comfortable listening to the audios. They get, they, they get their ditto working. They use their volume or do their volume. They get comfortable with the products. Maybe they, they set up a few customers, right? Those are honoring partners. Then they start building their asset, right? They start building their asset. They start getting together a list of names of who they'd like to have. Whatever. They get taught. You do some play huddle play where they, they um, you know, work with you. You maybe take two, two people at a time. We call it two by twos where you just take two people at a time and you get started and, and okay, how do you communicate with it? Well, we do mostly text. Okay. Then so you play how to play. You don't go through your whole list, you know, doing it wrong. You just basically do it right. And so that's, you know, building your asset. And then from there, those people go into these 90 day core runs because they're doing their nine core habits. And so then they go into these 90 day core runs where every 90 days they're hitting their stride. They're getting their skill set developed. And then from there, what's going to happen is people are going to have an opportunity to start putting in their structure. That's what we're looking for. Back in the, my earlier conversations about finding those partners that are able to grow, that are able to put in one at least, potentially maybe two honoring partners a month. It doesn't seem crazy. One partnership a month. Imagine 2021 at the end of it, you had 10 to 12 brand new honoring partners, right? Imagine by the end of 2022, you'd have 20 to 24 honoring partnerships. That structure, properly vetted partners that are, let's say half of them at least are growing honoring partnerships are definitely gonna allow you to finish project one. You're gonna be a qualified Ruby, right? You're gonna be making six figure income. You're gonna probably have identified at least three other people that are in that same mindset that you can help, maybe even six. Right, and that's what happened to Jan and I. Three years in, we we uh, 37th month we went into diamond qualification and finished up diamond qualification. Fourth year, we were, we were founders diamonds, and um, why? Because we identified those people, we did the work, we understood the skill set. Your leadership understands this. They've they've done it better than anybody. But what we have to do is we have to put our work shoes on, and we have to get our belief up. Right? We have to get our understanding that the great thing can happen. We've got to change our thoughts. We've got to change our words. We've got to be positive. Speak, the, speak positivity. Don't speak negativity. You know, don't take offense. And re, be willing to get out in front. Right? Be, be, the, be the outlier. Be the hardest worker in the room. Show this organization that you are the one that you're the one that's going to take this to the next level. You're the next platinum. You're the next emerald. You're the next diamond. And Jan and I will be so excited to, to high five you and greet you as we get back together here soon. And we love you. We respect you. You know, this is an amazing time to be in this asset. So don't take it for granted and go, let's go make some things happen.